Now, I'm, I'm surprised, not surprised at all actually with the Greenies. I mean, what you must do when you want big change is, as I say, the, the, big, the big boys that run the foundations create a movement, uh, a non-governmental organization, and then they fund them heavily, and, and, they, and they train they train the heads. In fact, they put the heads in to lead these NGOs. And all the followers come in, all the, all the ones that really believe in the little furry animals and stuff like that. And, uh, and other ones come in too, are really just fanatics and they want something to, to, to bash, you know, the big demonstrations and, because they really hate humanity. And that's a fact. There are lots out there who just hate humanity. And, um, it seems now they're really praising Genghis Khan. No kidding, for those who can remember who Genghis Khan is. But uh, I think they made him his, their patron saint because it killed so many folk, it says here. And it's a major mainstream again, media. Uh, it's killed so many people that carbon levels plummeted. No kidding you. This is the le- this is the lens they're going to to try and validate their nonsense. But I'll read this when I get back from this break. Hi folks, we're back cutting through the matrix and as I say, this article on Genghis Khan and the Greenies is astonishing because I had to really do a double take and see if it was April Fool's Day because that's the sort of thing you expect when you see this. But then again, there are fanatics out there, as I say, lots of fanatics and I've read all the articles even from the main sites themselves, the foundations, the NGOs, all into this stuff and they've been quite blatant about the fact that they terrify the public and, and lie to them and so on to get what they want. And what they want really is really a vastly reduced population, etc. And as I say, they've made, I think, Genghis Khan their patron saint. Anyway, it says here, um, Genghis Khan leader, he, he killed so many people that carbon levels plummeted. Well, the levels plummeted, no kidding, eh? Uh, they just know this because we've got a time machine. Anyway, it says uh, Genghis Khan's bloody conquest scrubbed 700 million tons of carbon. Uh, the exact figure, right? Uh, from the atmosphere as depopulated land returned to forest. He's been branded the, great, the greenest invader in history. He's the greenest invader in history. After his murderous conquest killed so many people, the huge swaths of cultivated land returned, as I say, to the forest. The Mongol leader who established a vast empire between the 13th and 14th centuries helped remove nearly 700 million tons of the carbon, claims a new study. The deaths of 40 million people meant that large areas of cultivated land grew thick once again with trees which absorbed carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, except for Canadian trees will add to that because the UN said that Canada's got bad trees. We thought we'd get one of these discounts with the carbon sinks and all that, but no, we've got bad trees now. When they want cash, it's suddenly it's bad trees. And although his methods may be difficult for environmentalists to accept, I don't think so. Ecologists believe it may be the first ever cause of or case of successful man-made global cooling. So there you go. Uh, Genghis Khan is a, was a greenie. I understood too. He got his slaves to build, you know, the little huts and that, and the, 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 the mud wattle stuff for the peasants and covered it with moss and green stuff like that. Well, he, of course, had big castles and palaces. Because you see, when you live at that level and you've got, you're dealing with important people, you've got to have big places to entertain them. And, um, of course, these uh, greenies all don't see themselves as the ordinary people who are going to get slaughtered. They always see themselves somehow as the managerial class. Uh, and it never, never quite gets, gets to their brain somehow that if there's no people around anymore down below them, uh, well, who are they managing and who would need them as a managerial class? Yeah, yeah, they don't think too far. <laughs> 